There are so many coding boot camps out there. You can just basically learn to code by enrolling into all different kinds of coding boot camps. So now that comes down to a very particular question: Is that how exactly do you get hired as a full-time developer after you graduated from these coding boot camps? We are going to talk about step by step on how exactly you can get a job as a full-time developer. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Victoria May and I am a full-time software developer living in New York City. In this channel, you are going to learn so much about learning how to code, web development, and all things related to tech. If you are interested in this type of videos, maybe consider subscribing and let's get started into our topic right away. So tip number one or step number one is to get some real world experiences. As soon as you graduated from the coding bootcamp or even before you graduating from the coding bootcamp, you should really think about what type of developer jobs that you want to do, especially going through LinkedIn or other job hunting websites to look into these particular rules. Resumes are a pretty important thing, but the other important part is actually getting that real world experiences. I know it's really hard when you don't really have real world experience, but recruiters are expect you to have work experience to give you an opportunity to hire you as a full-time developer. So how do you exactly gain that experience? It's by attending and collaborating with different developers all over the internet. One of the biggest tips that I would give you is to attend hackathons, like building small projects with other developers. And that encourages you not only networking with other developers, but also improving your team working skills, making you a great collaborator and a great developer. The second tip is to actually contribute to open source projects. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Vicky, open source projects aren't really like real world experience because you don't work as a full time. Yes and no, because open source contributions are usually a pretty large project. Like think about React. Thinking about contributing to open source not only helps you to understand how to read a large code base, but also being able to, you know, contribute to that code base. Here, I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Eddie. He's been a developer, especially helping people to contributing to open source for a very long time already on YouTube and Twitter and all the other social media platforms. I would link his channel down in the description down below so you can go ahead and check him out. Tip number two is to be open to small startups as well as internships and apprenticeships. Now, I know what you're thinking. Everybody wants to work for really large companies. Well, the truth is that as soon as you graduated from coding bootcamp, the chances of you to land your first job as your dream job is actually really, really, really low. As long as companies are hiring, developer positions either in a small company or in a larger company as long as they're hiring you as a developer rule you should really consider that quitting your first job and landing your dream job is probably higher if you get the real world experience and you understand what you really enjoy Step number three, or as I said, that tip number three is your online presence and as well as your portfolio site. I cannot stress enough about these things because now it's an era of the internet. Everything that is presented to the world is not only just your physical self, it's also your social presence. Now, in order to make you stand out or make you polished as a developer is not only your technical skills, but also your willingness to contribute to the deaf community as well as your passion. One of the important things that I would say that you should have right after you created your resume is to have a portfolio site. Now, a portfolio site should 
be the website that the recruiters will look into and they should learn a lot of things about you as a developer like your niche what you're good at your expertise um, your work experience possibly your passionate projects etc it should be different than a resume here are some of the key things that i really want you to add on your portfolio site so the first part is the bios and your about you page which is basically a section that talks about who you are as a developer what your interests are and just basically anything about you the second thing is projects so ideally i would say that you should deploy your projects so then the recruiters should tap into those projects and looking into those projects that you work on as a portfolio demonstration number three is downloadable resumes so this is important because if they really like you and they like your social presence and they tap onto your website definitely make sure that you have that section where it shows that they can either download your resume or there's a link for them to take a look at your resume online number four is relevant social media sites so for instance your Twitter handle, your LinkedIn handle, your LinkedIn site, or even Instagram or TikTok nowadays. Or if you have a YouTube channel, your YouTube channel page about tech, that would be cool too. Just anything that it can show that you are passionate about tech, you should definitely write that down. In my opinions, I think that a lot of people do get a job offer or do get a job interview from either Twitter or LinkedIn. The tech community on these two platforms are super active and you should probably take a chance this opportunity for that the next one is easy to find contact information and this is very straightforward you want to put down your contact information and for safety and privacy i would say put down your email is good enough the last but not the least is responsive design and by saying that i mean especially for web developers because um, a lot of times when recruiter reaching out to you they're not just using their desktop or their laptop they're using their phone their ipad other mobile devices so being able to create a website that is compatible for all these different kinds of um, applications or devices is important because this is like something that we look into a web developer how could you create an app or a website that's not responsive that makes you look pretty bad tip number four also is practice interviews like a lot of them getting used to study for co-challenges and being able to pass those co-challenges that one thing that i would emphasize is that there are different kinds of technical interviews you might get a technical interviews that are a algorithms asking you about big goals and doing all these you know data structures and algorithm type of question that's kind of like the code or you can get a take-home co-challenge and it's more a practical interview or a task that they want you to build some sort of website they want you to fetch apis and submit forms and do all of those tasks for the time or purpose of this video i am going to just briefly talk about that the takeaway from it is that you gotta be just grinding on interviews and you got to be getting better on interviews by practicing now you might still have some sort of like confusions on technical interviews or how to get a developer job after you graduated from bootcamp make sure to check out the other playlist that I talk about interviews and also how do you get a developer job and all that good stuff I'll talk to you soon make sure to be safe and adios